New year, new teardown. If you're looking for a palate cleanser between the garbage coming out of CES and Apple's Vision Pro, look no further than the latest tech from the modular notebook wizards, the Framework 16. We did get this hardware early, but our opinions are our own, and I think once you see this hardware, you're gonna understand why we're so impressed. The 16 isn't just bigger. This expansive 16-inch matte screen is built into a brand new design. The exterior is even more seamless than before, with entry to the device cleverly hiding under the laptop's ultra-modular top deck. Oh, and all these ports? The modules are the same as those in the 13. This is peak upgradability. Now, we got the pre-assembled model, but that doesn't mean we don't get to have fun. First up, six expansion modules, in our case, ports. My favorite feature is that the ports can be hot-swapped to suit your needs. HDMI on different sides of your desk at home and at the office? Frameworks got your back. Plus, they've got more options, too. The top deck is also a customizer's playground. Pop the retaining latches and you're off to the races. Framework is really leaning into the gaming market with this model, including slick RGB keyboard, cute spacers, programmable LED side panels, a handy number pad, or a sweet RGB macro pad, all secured by magnets and connected via spring contacts. The ultra-customizable top does result in slightly less accessible internals. Granted, they come off tool-free. Then it's a matter of disconnecting the interconnect cable, helpfully labeled as step one, and loosening screws two through 17. Framework tells me this rather arcane pattern helps keep the thin panel flat. Spoiler alert, I replaced the screws without following the prescribed order and it worked just fine. These T5s are captive, which is great for reassembly. The mid plate lifts right off, revealing a lovely flat architecture. The laptop is our oyster, but let's start with the swappable SSD. The blade is secured by a single screw, one that isn't captive. Turns out this gold tint represents removable fasteners. Nice touch. Wonderful springing action and the blade pulls free. Now, the pièce de résistance, removable RAM. Seeing these springy RAM slots nearly brings tears to my eyes. Just look at them. As we know, batteries are consumables and this battery is about as swappable as it gets. Three labeled screws, no adhesive, and this 85 watt hour cell is free. Just about the only thing that could improve this battery procedure is having it available at the deck level with modules sliding over top. But honestly, I can't complain. Oh, and one more slick feature. When you slide the battery into its connector, there are two red LEDs to indicate that the system is now receiving power. A great safety reminder for even an experienced fixer. What other goodies can we pull out? Ah, wireless card. Another delightful throwback to a more civilized age. This replaceable card can be upgraded and the included plastic bracket will keep the antennas in their proper place. Okay, it's meat and potatoes time. Let's get to the graphics module. A slick interconnect cable, a couple securing screws, all captive, and the graphics module is set to slide right out. This thing is hefty. I'm willing to bet most of the graphics bulk is for cooling the AMD Radeon RX 7700S, but let's investigate. Once again, gold for the removable fasteners and standard silver for the captive ones. And the cover? and USB port bracket slide right out. I'll also remove the two graphic specific fans for good measure. Four captive screws each and a wee ZIF connector with a handy handle. A handle that can unfortunately get snagged in these case pass-throughs. So if you end up needing to replace noisy graphics fans, be gentle. Out comes the board and yeah, this is a monster. Loosening the once again labeled fasteners and peeling it up from the thermal pads, this is a huge heatsink assembly, plus some super thick thermal tape. Together, there are 150 grams of passive thermal management. That's almost half the graphic module's weight. That's some serious heat sinking. The board itself is rather unassuming, but represents a shining future of upgradable graphics for gamers everywhere. With the upgradable peripherals removed, what's left for the main board? Let's pop our expansion modules back out. Easier said than done. These guys are snapped in tight. Good news for portability, honestly. First, we'll disconnect and remove the biometric button and frame, then the speakers. Now we can tackle the logically numbered mainboard screws. For a change, these aren't captive, but nor are they gold colored. Bye bye display and camera connectors, and hello mainboard. A few more screws, and the heatsink is free, and oops. <laughs> Don't worry, I didn't actually break anything. This thermal pad may be solid at room temp, but it's actually liquid metal. Lucky for me, Framework intends to sell replacement pads, but liquid metal is so efficient during normal use, you probably won't need to be replacing these. And here we have it the bare bones board. Granted, the USB-C ports that receive the modules are soldered to the board, but given the strong connection and that replaceable modules will be receiving the wear, I'm actually not too worried about these. And look at all these delightful labels. Just a few more bits and bobs, the speakers are conjoined by cable into a single assembly and pop right out. As ever, the magnetic display bezel peels right out. 
and the screen is once again secured by a mere four screws and no adhesive. The Framework 16 truly feels like someone brought my personal hardware wishlist to reality. I'm not only impressed by the extreme modularity, but also the thought and care put into this premium feeling device. With incredible modularity, no parts pairing, and even QR code linked guides, Framework more than earns a provisional repairability score of 10 out of 10.